Hello, welcome to The Relation Skippers, where Craig and I talk about men getting wise. This Guys getting wise. That's right. That's us. That is us. Now, we're beginning the first of eight special podcasts today. Craig has written a book. That is correct. Coming out very soon. The book is called Get the F Out of My Life. Yes, it is. And we're going to discuss Craig's book one chapter at a time. There are eight chapters, therefore eight podcasts. Eight actionable steps of how to get somebody the F out of your life. For whom did you have this in mind? Who's your audience in your head? Good guys going through a bad time. This is not for the players, not for the super alpha males who will bounce back quickly. This is for good guys, nice guys, um, guys who really did try to do the right thing, do right by their woman, their partner, and uh, uh, stuck with it. Maybe their partner had an affair on them. Uh, but anyway, it's for guys who've had a tough time getting over a relationship. So, so, so married folks as well as married, boyfriend, girlfriend. breakups, uh, separations, divorce. It's, it's for somebody having a really hard time recovering from. And it, it, frankly, if you read a lot online, there are a lot of men who it takes longer to get over than women. And... In the book, I go through the reasons for that, okay. but um, but there's lots of reasons that men take longer to get through a bad breakup than a woman. Um, and so this is a handbook, if you will, a guide for uh, to survive and thrive after a breakup. Maybe just in two sentences, why are you a good person to write this book? Oh, well... <laughs> uh, Oh, please withhold your modesty. Okay. Well, Allow your I, I will ego. try very, very much. <laughs> but the the reason I don't have to hold it is because I'm just as fucked up as the rest of the guys. However, I did learn a few things along the way. I dated until I was 40 with a couple of really big breakups that I, that I did have a hard time getting over. Then I've been married for over 20 years and worked out a lot of things with my wife. And then I went to school and got a master's in conflict management um, and did family mediation for 10 years and helping couples get divorced and separate and so on. So adding all those things together, um, and I started to notice that men... Uh, you know, our cultural landscape has really changed, right, uh, for men and women. Um, I think women are on, a, are on an ascendancy in many ways. More of them are graduating from college than men now. Um, and women have a stress response of tend and befriend. So when they break up with somebody or go through stress, they will befriend other. They'll get together with their friends and they'll go through it and they'll, and they'll tend to each other. Men's stress response is fight or flight. So we will either fight or be alone. And that's the reason it takes men longer to get over. So I started noticing this more and more. And then uh, you and I do workshops here in Sarasota for, uh, and we have a lot of uh, people, singles and couples, and we talk about a lot of relationship issues. And we've noticed also there that men uh, don't come as much uh, to these type of gatherings because they stay on their own, right? And um, and seem to have a harder time getting over. So, thus the book was born six months or so ago and uh, and just finishing up. So, so it's, we published in around May, June yes, 2019. Yes, that's right, because uh, it depends on when somebody's hearing this uh, podcast. But um, we're hoping to be out by... May or June of this year, 2019. Okay, so. good. Uh, so let's dive straight into it. So this is chapter one. Chapter one is, and I, I did sort of a gimmick where I go, I named the chapters all in with an A-T-E, like extricate, contemplate, recuperate, and so on. But the very first chapter is extricate. And now let me ask you, Tim, um, 
and then I'll tell you how I also was very poor at extricating at one point. But uh, have you been through a big relationship where it was hard to pull out of it? And you yo-yoed back and forth. Um, most of them, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> and was there one that was particularly painful after you? Uh, um... I think they're all painful to a degree. Yes. Uh, what's more painful, though, is in my case, is the way in which you get stressed and you get pulled between doing the right thing and doing the thing that you want to do. Mm-hmm. There's a kind of a... If you've been in a relationship for, let's say, six months or a year or two or three or four, say in one particular case I'm thinking of, you have a loyalty to that person and yet you're then going to break that loyalty. And if you're me, you don't have the tools to do that well. So you struggle through with a kind of an ad hoc, amateurish and fundamentally uh, ending up being a hurtful way of doing these things because I think with all this stuff there's there's the right way to do it there's the wrong way mm-hmm. to do it and as we know in all kinds of relationships there's no handbook for any of this kind of stuff right and again men can't rely on getting together with each other and helping each other through it I mean we can learn to do that of course and that's part of what this book is for but I'll tell you how I poorly extricated and how the title of the book came about was that um I was dating this woman. I was really into her. We, we had, I, she was very hot. I was very attracted to her, and we had good chemistry. And I liked her, and all the all the elements were there. But she was hot and cold on me. And this is thirty years ago. So, um, and I found myself keep giving her chances and yo-yoing in, and then yo-yoing out. And when she would get cold, I would pull back. And when she'd warm up again, I'd pull in and so on and so forth. And uh, one particular time as she was making one more round of tentative plans with me, and I was on the phone with her, and I yelled into the phone, get the fuck out of my life and slam the phone down. Um, And then I never heard from her again. And... That ultimately was so good. I felt terrible afterwards, right? Uh, But it allowed me to go on and meet my future wife. And, but I realized that, and I go through in the book, in the extricate chapter, and I'll talk about it if you want a little bit, was that um, what happens with the yo-yoing effect is it's like an addiction, right? Um, when you're there's a hormone called oxytocin when human beings bond and that is that has a calming effect on our aggressive tendencies and so on and women get it when they're tending to their babies but they also get it when they're in love and men also get it when we're in love so oxytocin we have a big bonding and you use the word loyalty that that's but you, I bet you, you also had a big buildup of this oxytocin hormone, and when you finally did break, then that gets lost. And since men will stay on our own, we don't have chances to build that back up. So you're saying that the, the actual hormonal loss and the fact that we don't replace it with the warming embrace of friends, like a woman would, changes our mood and our sense. I believe that is a big reason. Women will get together with their friends. They'll get a boost of oxytocin. I mean, they still are, are feeling the loss of the relationship. Don't get me wrong. I'm not downplaying that for women. I know it's hard as well. I'm just saying why it is appears to be harder for men in the long term is men will not, by staying on our own, we don't rebuild the shared experience oxytocin moment the so bonding if, moment if you're falling down that cliff if you've fallen off the cliff of extrication there's no stopping you there's no barrier down there right because having experienced this myself you just get lower and lower and lower because you think well it, even if it might be the thing that i wanted it just doesn't feel good to be without this person or just on my own right so there's no uh backstop if you like yes the guys exactly. don't have backstop guys for this event and the reason that we may yo-yo back is 
we're trying to stop the pain and create that bonding rescue moment. Uh, and so, but it doesn't work if the relationship is breaking up. What happens is you become like, uh, have you heard of B.F. Skinner, a, a psychologist, and he did experiments on rats. And when they would get, um, and he would, the rat would push a lever and get a pellet as a reward. Well, when the rat presses and knows the number of times to press to get the reward, the rat was perfectly fine. But when they made it random, where the rat maybe presses it three times and gets a reward, but next time has to press it 80 times, and then the time after that, 300 times, the rat became a an obsessed, crazed, uh, exhausted fool. <laughs> so I'm going to extend the crazy rat scenario <laughs> yes. to say myself and the idea that if you are going to stop a relationship, you've got to do it cold and dead and completely. Is that what you're advocating? That is, extrication means 100% withdrawal, no contact, no phone calls, no texts, no get-togethers, no sex, no social media, uh, no booty calls, no trying to be friends. And the reason is that creates the predictability. Now you're the rat, not, not with reward right now, but the predictability will normalize your physiology and your hormones so you can start the healing process. Um, I'll just this this is a, a kind of a good way to, for for me to tell you that uh, I was not really a yo yo person. Okay. Um, for the most part, but when you do, it's as if you've got two sides of your head. You've got the side of your head that says, "I can see my life going forward without this person because being with her was." fill in the blank, bad. But I'm, she's still there for some reason. She's still a, a phone call away or, like you say, a social media uh, contact away. And I know that if we got back together and had a couple of drinks, we'd probably end up in bed together again anyway. So you've got this horrible mismatch in your own mind about, oh, gosh, wouldn't it be nice if I could just go back because it's predictable, like you say, mm -hmm. and yet you've got this yearning for something that's not that. Right, Yes. And that unpredictability, and since you're breaking up for a reason, right? It It's not working. It didn't work. It's either a long-term marriage that's breaking up or, and, and this is also for guys who have been in a relationship where they fell head over heels for somebody and, uh, and it was a good bond for a while and they are hormonally locked in, but it doesn't work out. You also have to go through these steps to extricate now let's talk so let's talk about that the, the kind of the finer detail there if if you let's say you've been dating someone for six months like you say and you just realize it's not going anywhere it's not working for whatever reason is it important to know yourself why it's not working do you need to justify it to yourself or can we just extricate based on i don't know why it's just not working let's move on to the plan craig's plan well you only need this kind of plan if if it's really hard to extricate, you know, and move on. Not just extricate, but move on. I mean, uh, there, like I say, there's eight chapters. Extricating is just one chapter. You also you need to find ways to recuperate and to rebuild and to regenerate and get your energy back and your mojo back so you can then go on and meet a nice person that you can be with. But um, what I was referring to a six-month thing is it depends on how locked in somebody is. I mean, people do fall head over heels for someone in six months and then have a hard time extricating. So it's a, you have to use your mind to make the decision to extricate, but it's going to be hard to do because our mind doesn't control everything we do, right? I think you'd have to be a kind of a sociopath to go through any kind of separation from someone, as short or as long as it might be. Right. Uh, and, and feel nothing. And, right. Right. <laughs> that makes you, that yeah. means you've got some kind of problem, I think. Yeah. And so even if it is a short term thing, and let's take the ultimate craziness, a one night stand, right? You're still going to have some kind of feelings for that person. So that's, well, that would be more of a stalker if the guy can't extricate <laughs> after one night. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, he probably could read this too. But uh, that's a separate issue. Yeah, altogether. I'm taking it to the extreme, of course. Yes. But the, it's the fact of understanding the way that our moods and our our, our psyche work. Is right, we, we do are bond- hormones. Bonding is bonding, right? We are hormones, not just mental processes. You know. Um, in fact, I talk a little bit about how. Uh, the reason that we go into fight or flight is because that's our male stress response when we're breaking up. And, and uh, But part of what makes it hard to do the logical thing, excuse me, is our, our amygdala will get triggered. And it goes into what is referred to sometimes as amygdala hijack, where we go into that fight or flight mode. And then it doesn't matter what the logical response should be. We're probably not going to do it. We're either going to fight or flee. And uh, now, if you calm yourself down and and get away from the situation, then you can go back to logic at some point. But that's why I say, in the since our stress response is fight or flight, you choose flight. What uh, if you're one of those guys for whom fleeing means fleeing into the arms of another woman? I totally understand that and get it. And here's what happens with that: then you get a boost of the good hormones again, right? The dopamine and the, uh, and even the oxytocin because it's a bonding experience. Um, the problem with that is it's so short term uh, that, and then there's a lot of other complications that can come with one night stand type scenarios, right? STDs, obsession on your part or the other one or the other person's part, pregnancy. Uh, what happens if you kind of start to like this new person? You're so not over the past thing that you may be so needy and and codependent uh, that she'll push away from you. And now you're rejected again right after the major rejection. And then that second woman will be rejected eventually too, more than likely as well. So that creates problems. See, there's an entire industry built up around people with what they call emotional baggage, yes. which is this exact kind of behavior, in my opinion. Yeah. In fact, the, the woman I was talking about that where the title came from, I was her rebound guy. <laughs> she was not over the previous guy. Right. That's what I figured out later. So that was no good for either one of us, really. She should not have been dating me in the first place. She should have gotten over the guy and then started dating. So it didn't work for either one of us. Um, and yet, under another circumstance, it may have. It may have. If it, you were in the right mental spot for a and new And she woman. was as well. Right, right. Me and that same. Although, no, I'm very happy that I ended up with my wife instead oh, of, of that woman. But you get the idea. If we. So if we do a rebound. Now, I get the idea of, uh, you know, and Woody Allen's joke, you know, uh, as empty experiences go, uh, <laughs> sex is one of the best, you know. But. <laughs> <laughs> rebound sex is one of the best but um but empty being the key word what i'm taking away from this and i have not read your book by the way yes. just so that you know i mean I, right. i've got a general idea of where you're coming from but you, what you're saying is like mentally preparing to extricate yourself is a really good exercise to do and it won't take long because i think what you're saying is once you've made the decision to do so and then do it Understand there will be a period of being on your own. And you will feel crappy. It's yeah. really important. In, in other words, and I kind of make a point in the book of saying, don't expect to feel great just by doing these steps. I mean, you're going to feel crappy as you extricate and the hormone levels are out of balance, you know. Um, Understanding that one fact. Right. Knowing that should help because don't lose hope, gain perspective, right? It, it, so that's... I think a lot of people start to lose hope because they maybe they don't know this stuff for one thing, um, and uh, and they're not. For men, it's better because we're better on cognitive uh, issues, cognitive empathy. It's called. And bim- women are better at emotional empathy. But uh, so if we can put something in the right slot in our brain, it will help us. So a lot of people, including me, would seek solace in something that might take the edge off a little, which, of course, is always the worst thing you can possibly do. Such as alcohol, alcohol or drugs or, 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 or pornography some people turn to, right? Right. Uh, and all those things, I'm not a Puritan here in saying, you know, 
don't do any of that. What I am saying is don't get lost in that. Make sure and and do the healthy steps that that you know I've laid down in this book. And I'm not saying mine is the only book somebody should read. I'm just saying that I've tried to put it all in one place, you know, healthy steps you can take. It is interesting, uh, isn't it, that the time at which we're under the most emotional stress is the time at which we need to be able to figure out to do the right thing. Right. And uh, and that is difficult for us because it's not in our wheelhouse to know what to do with devastated feelings, right? Um, it's not automatically in our wheelhouse. Uh we know what to do if there's a lion charging us. We're better at that than women. And uh, we know how to fix a bunch of things. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of things that men are, is in our wheelhouse, right? Um, but this one is not as much. And it's not something one can practice. <laughs> exactly. You or, don't want to practice <laughs> rejection. Or, or can you? See, I may be of the opinion, let's say, um, so we're middle-aged. Um, if somebody's listening to this and they're 20 or 25, the mental state of understanding that before you go into relationships that a breakup might be painful emotionally and for these reasons that you describe in the book, that might be a really valuable thing for some guys, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, rather than practicing it, just know that that's the case. Of course, the thing is that we have this recency bias, right? So we always yeah. look at the last experience we have as being more right. important than prior experiences. Right. But still, I think it's a valuable tool. It's better to kind of have something to grab onto instead of just be alone with it. And uh, and if you want, I can go through some of the suggestions I give because, and on the relationship skippers, we call them ahoys. In the book, I call them specific, actionable suggestions. And uh, so, and I talk about that experiment with the rats. And so I'm saying, if you're in the middle, of your, let's say your ex texts you or wants to get together or maybe is doing the yo-yo thing, say in your mind and see it happening and look up this experiment if you want. Remember the rats. Look at that, ra see that ragged rat that's you if you yo-yo with her. Think about not wanting that scenario. With the matted fur yeah, and yeah. drooling. I mean, smell <laughs> smell what it smells like. Did you see that rat looking horrible? Yeah, that's horrible. It is awful. <laughs> right? Okay. So remember the rats. As soon as that text come in, comes in from her. No, I don't want to be like that, right? Um Good friends say no. Set it up if you have a friend that you can call, just like, uh, you know, uh, in Alcoholics Anonymous, they have their uh, their mentor or coach, right? And you text or call the friend, and he says, don't do it. You need support. And remember, guys will stay on their own. In this book, I am, I am suggesting and teaching to not do the alone thing. You do need to reach out and find others. Now, it doesn't have to be your friends, and we talk about that in the recuperate chapter, but uh, in fact, it should, most of your hard work should probably be with a counselor or somebody if you're really having a tough time because it will burden your friends if you have to do too much of that. Um, and so another suggestion is to use a relationship coach. They exist all over the country now. You can, uh, and I, I give in the book, ways to find them. Um, and those are people that you could text or call and they will coach you through not, you know, staying, staying away. Um, there's a website called stick.com, S T I C K K.com. And it's a science based way of sticking to your goals. And so, and you can publicly proclaim to everyone and put money down on it that you'll lose if you if you break it and you say I am I'm going to have no contact with my ex that's your goal you put it out there and uh, and then you will have people supporting you and checking in and seeing how you're doing um, that way you can ca you can stay semi anonymous if you don't want all your friends to know you see that that you're struggling with it um, there's another thing I came up with, which I use myself sometimes now. And 
if you do have contact, let's say you have kids together with your ex, so you will have contact. Then you will have physical contact with, and um, and she may say something that triggers you. Uh, and so when you're together and something like that happens, just say in your mind, firm, not flame. And what I mean by that is, it's okay to be firm. You don't have to be the nice guy. You can be be firm. But don't go into flame because what will happen is that will get out of control and you will you'll have rage moments uh, and maybe she'll have rage moments. And uh, and you take deep breaths as you think of that and then you leave the shared space as soon as possible. So the idea is you don't have to be nice, but you have to be firm because that's your in-between spot. Instead of flame, flame out, get fiery, and that'll do nothing but you could end up in jail or uh, on the bad end of the uh, of the divorce court. As a matter of general principle, firm, not flame, is an excellent manly skill to cultivate. Exactly, and we're pretty good at that because we can make use of our stoic skills, you know. Stoicism is uh, an excellent word and one that was going to imply in this circumstance, right? Extrication means likely that you're going to revert to that lonely possible uh, place of solitude that right. you're suggesting ways yes. out of yeah. and ways to improve for your own benefit. So the book's called... Get the F out of my life. Say it and again. by the way, the F ends up meaning something else in the book. Oh, Not little, what you think it does. So maybe we'll reveal that another time. All right. So that's extrication. Next time we will be doing contemplate. Hmm, let me think about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you next time, Craig. See you later. Bye bye.